Hey everyone, this is Dan Kelso from Provision, and I just wanted to walk you through an AEM migration tool that I've been working on. I've gone ahead and checked out the project. You can find it on GitHub. And I've uh, com copied all of the files that it, the readme indicates to a test folder. Uh, no one really wants to see that. But let's take a look through and see what these files actually are. The first one here is a file mappings file. Now this contains just two properties, source to target, which tells you if you have files, where to copy them from the old repository to the new AEM repository. I have a filter.xml. If you're familiar with AEM packages, you'll already know what this does. It just defines the root of the content that I'm going to update. I have a page mappings file, and this is where most of the magic happens. So uh, every page you're going to be migrating is represented in here as a, as a row with all of the data that it needs. You can actually add new columns as you want. Um, and really add any content that you need to be able to create the pages in AEM. Uh, page.xml is just a sample page. And then our properties file here just configures how the package actually is represented in AEM. This file actually has a list of files to process to generate a list of replacements on the content. And so you have to manually invoke that replacement function. But what that does is it allows you to replace the old legacy paths with new paths or legacy URLs with new URLs and have a whole chain. So these are processed in order so that you have predictable ability to be able to process. Well, you know, this is slash old path dot HTML versus this is www.oldsite.com slash old path dot HTML. And then finally, replacement CSV. This is just an optional replace, uh, list of replacements, sort of like the file mappings. But unlike file mappings, it won't actually copy the file. It'll just perform the replacement. So if you've already done, say, an import and you need to be able to replace those paths or you need to replace paths to some external system, this allows you to do that. So let's go ahead and run the migration script. It's pretty fast. This is almost nothing in terms of content, but you know, still get to see how it does, how it works. So I'm going to say, migrate.groovy and test. Now I could add another parameter for the batch name, but in this case, I'm just going to run uh, a full import. Now you can see here, uh, it's actually throwing me an assertion error. It's saying source uh, file work source page at XML not found. So the migration script will attempt to fail as soon as possible. Um, so it's not wasting your time and so that um, it's not going to try to map something incorrectly. So I need to go ahead and actually give it a source file to work with. So if I go into here, say work, create a new folder, source, and then just move my page.xml in there and rerun. You can see here it'll have created the package. Now I can see that I can look at the target here and see exactly what it is generated. Um, all it's really doing is generating in this target area and then zipping that up. So you can see here it's generated the AEM page structure in the .content.xml file. Uh, it's copied over my filter and properties.xml. Now since I didn't specify a batch, it did copy that. If I did specify a batch, it'll actually generate a filter on the fly uh, based on the pages and the doc and the files that are being processed. So let's see how the script goes about creating the dot content on XML for my input page XML. If I expand the templates, you can see there are two files, commons.groovy and content.groovy. Content.groovy is a template, and that's the particular template that's used inside of my page mappings. You could define any templates you want. It's totally arbitrary in terms of the naming. Uh, it just needs to be not starting with a dot and ending with dot groovy. Now, the templates all have one function, render page, that takes these parameters that you can see here. There's a little bit more documentation on the GitHub readme if you want, but they use this pit markup builder to generate the .content XML, uh, XML file that's used by AEM. So you can see here it loads this .com .commons.groovy file, which has a number of helper functions. If I go ahead and take a look at that, including defining page properties, uh, performing the replacements, setting the root properties, which is really the uh, namespaces plus the primary type of CQ page, and then creating components. You could just create a simple component with a resource type or create one with a map of properties. Uh, just already in there for you, for your convenience. So you can see here what it's going to do is it's going to create a JCR root element and then a JCR content element and then root and then responsive grid with a title and text inside of it. 
And you can see here it's specifying parameters for those components. So I take a look back at the .content.xml file. You can see here you got JSR root, JSR content, root, responsive grid, title, and text, and then the default properties as well as the properties that are loaded uh, from that input XML file. For more information, check out the README on GitHub. I hope the AEM migration script makes your content migration to AEM groovy.